In this video, we're gonna take a look at the UI style guide page that is available to you with automatic.css. The UI style guide page is a page that you can add to any website that gives you a really good visual overview of a lot of the core features of automatic.css. This is great to show clients, but it's also really helpful for you as a designer or a developer when you're making changes in the dashboard so that you can see a really solid visual representation in a real world web page. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into Oxygen here, and I'm going to show you how to first install the UI style guide page, then we'll take a look at how it works. So in order to install the UI style guide page, it's very simple in Oxygen. You're gonna to go to the automatic CSS dashboard and you're gonna click on the setup and style guide tab. You're gonna see a design set key here. All you wanna do is click on it. It copies it to your clipboard automatically. Then you can go to Oxygen settings. Under Oxygen settings, go to library, click on enable third-party design sets and hit save changes. Once you do that, a new button is gonna appear. It says add design set. Go ahead and click on that and then paste your design set key inside the site key box and hit add source site. You're going to see that it has added the automatic CSS style guide. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to pages, all pages, and we have to actually create a page for our UI style guide. So we're going to hit add new and we're going to call this UI style guide. Now, one thing that I like to do is I like to change the URL slug. You can either do style guide or you can just do UI if you prefer really short uh, slugs. You can make it anything you want. I'm going to make it style-guide if I can type. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit publish. Now you do want to do one more thing before you actually get to editing this page. Uh, I'm using Rank Math. You should have an SEO plugin of some sort installed on your website. And if you do, I want you to go to the settings for the page that you're working on, the UI style guide page, and just set it to no index. This page has no SEO value. It has no valuable content for your website. So we don't really need this page to be crawled or indexed. And we also don't really want people finding it necessarily on Google when they're doing searches around our website. So we set that to no index and then update. Okay, next thing you're gonna do is edit this page with Oxygen. There's one more step that we have to take to actually get the UI style guide to show up on this page. Once we do that, we're free to, to take a look at the structure of the style guide and how it behaves as we change settings in the ACSS dashboard. So I'm gonna click on the little add element plus sign up here. I'm gonna go down to library, design sets, and I'm gonna see the automatic CSS style guide here. What I wanna do is under pages, click on the style guide page, and it's just gonna take a few seconds. It's gonna add the style guide to our page. Now, really important here, you are free to edit this style guide. You can add to it, you can remove things, you can change how it looks and feels. It's now a blank slate that you have full control over. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save changes, and we'll view this on the front end and take a look at how it's structured. So I'm gonna to exit to front end in a new tab. And first thing I want you to see is that really this is plug and play. So it's gonna dynamically inject the name of your website, um, both here and here in this little intro sentence. Next, as you come down, you're gonna see the colors. All of your colors and shades are right here for you to see. All of your transparencies are within the transparencies tab. As I scroll down, we can see our typography, different headings in all different font weights. We also have headings as they relate to paragraph text. We can see different size of our text. We can see all of our buttons, both solid buttons and outline buttons. We can also see these on a dark background. This is really helpful for doing audits around accessibility, like for color contrast ratios. You can see how your button sizes scale. You can see your widths. You can see your section padding, how your spacing plays out. And as you change spacing and spacing scales and typography and typography scales in the dashboard, all of these are going to adapt accordingly. So you can see how those changes play out in a real world setting. We added some cards here so that you can see things like padding and then your normal text size inside of your cards, shadows, and then of course, border radius as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to the admin area. 
We're gonna go to the automatic.css dashboard and we're just gonna make a few different changes. So I'm gonna go to automatic CSS and I'm gonna start in my colors tab here. And the first thing I wanna do is change my primary color. I kinda of like this purple that I'm using as secondary, but I want to use a maybe a much brighter version of it. Uh, so we'll do something like that. I don't really want to change. Actually, I do. I want my base color to be in that purple family as well, except I want it to be darker. And we'll kind of mute it a little bit more. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit save changes there. The next thing I want to do is go to my typography tab. And I want to make a couple changes here. I think I want my typography scale instead of perfect fourth to be augmented fourth. Uh, I'm going to come down here and actually override my XXL text size, which is also my H1 text size. I want that to be eight rim, uh, I'm sorry, eight rim on desktop. And I want it to be 3.8 rim, which is about 38 pixels on mobile. And so by giving this a maximum and a min, it's going to make sure that it's automatically responsive. What automatic CSS is going to do is it's going to generate a clamp function as well as fallbacks for these new manual sizes that you're putting in. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. All of the other sizes are going to be automatically generated based on the text scale that I chose and my base text size. What I did with the manual override is I just removed the H1 and the XXL size from the scale and gave it its own manual size. All right, so I've changed my text size of my H1. I've changed the typography scale. I've changed my primary color and I've changed my base color. I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh and we can see how our UI style guide responds to these changes. So you can see now that anything that is an H1 is now very large, right? Because we gave it that manual size. However, if we take a look, everything is still mobile responsive. And we can see how our new H1 scales down to mobile. And everything is looking really, really good here. Next thing what you're gonna see is my primary color has changed. All of the shades have been regenerated for that color. Same with my base, all different here. And if you'll notice, it's very hard to see, very subtle, but Things like my divider shadows have actually changed a little bit because those inherit the base color. Uh, my labels here have changed. They've adopted the new primary color. So you're gonna see how your changes play out in real life. There's my buttons are the new primary color on my new base color. So I can check color contrast ratios here if I'd like. Here's all my new buttons in the primary color. All of these, um, scales right here uh, or indicators have changed to adopt the new base color. Um, everything works. It just works out of the box. Everything is automatically responsive. It's fantastic. So this gives you a really clear indication of how your changes in the dashboard are playing out on a real page with real elements. And it kind of goes beyond that because it shows you all of the new possibilities uh, that are available to you. So if you're not liking something, you can go ahead and make adjustments. In fact, if I wanted to change this ultra light primary shade, uh, maybe I wanted this to be a little bit darker. Um, or maybe I don't need really dark stuff with my primary. I want to tighten this entire shade scale up right here. We can absolutely go and do that. So I'm going to go to shades instead of colors. And under my primary, I can start changing my ultra light lightness. So maybe that's 95, but this becomes 90. This becomes 80. This becomes 70. And this becomes 60. Now I hit save changes and what you're going to see is instead of a really broad scale like we have here, I refresh and we have a much tighter scale where my dark is certainly darker than my lights and my mediums and my ultra dark is even darker, but they don't go all the way to actual really dark colors of this primary color. This is another example of how much control you have with automatic.css. And if you had built an entire site around this, you can easily theme the website after it's built.
right? You can dial in all of your theming after a website is built. Um, if you are creating templates where you're gonna reuse the same template structure across many different sites, but you still need to change things like typography and colors, absolutely um, a cakewalk with automatic.css. So this is the UI style guide. This is version one of the UI style guide. We are planning a version two of the UI style guide with probably more elements and more features, maybe some click to copy in there uh, for your classes and your variables and things like that. Like I said, this is completely built with um, both utility classes and custom classes that you can see practical real world application. And it's completely customizable to you. You can add, you can remove, you can do whatever you would like with it. Hope you guys like it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments.